Okay, so it's time for us to talk about a really important concept um, and a really important definition for optimization uh, in a sequence of videos that are going to be all about convex functions. Um, so this is going to get pretty theoretical about a particular type uh, of function, but it's something that's um, just critically important uh, for doing optimization. So what do we mean by a convex function? Um, you have actually seen uh, these things before in one dimension. A convex function uh, is essentially something, a function that points up um, all the time or points down um, uh, all the time. We'll, we'll talk about um, functions that point up. So if you look at that blue curve uh, there, what it means for that to be convex um, is that if I draw any line um, connecting two points uh, on that curve, uh, then the line always sits above uh, above the curve. So if I change where x and y are um, uh, on that curve, so if I put x and y anywhere, if I draw any line uh, between those two points, um, then it always lies above the curve. Right, so there's a lot of notation here, but the basic idea is if I move these two points around, if I put uh, x up there and y up down there and draw a line between them, it lies above the curve. Um, and if I do that anywhere else, um, you, you get that. So you know, any function that's sort of pointing upwards uh, like that um, uh, all the time. So a, a, a parabola or anything uh, like this uh, uh, that's, that's nicely concave up and friendly is going to be convex. So that's in one dimension. And what we need, because we're going to do multivariate uh, optimization, is we're going to need to talk about um, convex functions uh, in Rn, so um, in, multiple, in multiple dimensions. And so the definition uh, is basically this. So a function f defined on some convex set uh, in Rn. So it's not just on an interval now. It's on, um, uh, it uses vectors that are anywhere in space. Um, it says uh, the function is convex if for any x and y, uh, I have this strange property uh, holding, uh, holding here. So f of t x uh, plus 1 minus t y is less than uh, or equal to t times f of x plus 1 minus t f of y, and t runs between 0 and 1. And then strictly convex, the only difference between these two definitions uh, is that this less than sign, uh, less than or equal to sign, sorry, in uh, the definition of convex tends to a strictly less than sign uh, in, uh, uh, for, uh, for strictly convex. Uh, so why does uh, t move from 0 to 1? So t is defined as running between 0 and 1 because if you plug in the endpoints here, so if you have... Um, t be equal to 1, uh, then this object here is f of x. You get the point x inside the brackets. Uh, and if you plug in um, t equals 0, then the x disappears and you get the point y. Uh, so you, and, and, and so uh, for t in between, you get all the points in between x and y. So you get all the points that run along a straight line in one dimension, or all the points on a flat plane, a uh, hyperplane, uh, if x and y. Uh, are in multiple dimensions. Well, no, it's, sorry, it's always a line. Uh, it's just a line in multiple, multiple dimensions. So this is the equation uh, of a straight line uh, here uh, that interpolates between x and y, uh, and then we have this property holding here. And basically this says uh, that points on the curve are always less than uh, the straight line connecting them there. So this, is, you know, th this describes all the locus of points uh, that are between x and uh, the, uh, between x and y, and then this is the equation on the right-hand side um, of the straight line connecting the two points. Uh, that's it. But the picture there um, is the thing that you need to you need to remember. Um, it's a it's a function that's nicely pointing upwards, um, and straight lines always lie above uh, lie above the curve or the surface uh, in multiple dimensions. There's an alternate definition. Uh, that's sometimes more useful to use. So instead of writing uh, tx plus 1 uh, minus t times y, um, we can write that as y plus t times x minus y, and that's just rearranging uh, things. It's just taking uh, out a common uh, factor of t uh, from uh, the expression above, and then you can rearrange the thing on the right uh, here. So that's some, we'll, we'll work with both of these definitions uh, when we do proofs and things about convex functions. But they're exactly the same thing. Uh, so that's it. Now you have the picture of the, a straight line lying above, uh, lying above the curve here. Um, and so 
in multiple dimensions. So if we go up one dimension from a 1D function um, to a 2D function, here's what a convex function would look like. So you know, it's the, it's the two-dimensional analog um, of something that looks sort of parabolic. So if I take any two points on this surface here uh, and connect them uh, by a line, no matter where I put those two points, uh, a line is always going to sit above that surface. So that's a convex, uh, that's a convex function uh, in two dimensions. And if you can imagine your yeah, higher dimensional things, um, that same idea is going uh, is going to hold. On the other hand, something that's non-convex uh, will be something like this, something that's bumpy. So there are convex, there are regions where this surface, where this 2D function is convex. So if I look in any one of these depressions here, you can imagine that uh, connecting lines uh, across the surface uh, will sit above the, uh, will always sit above the surface. But if I connect a point uh, that's over at the bottom here uh, of my picture over to a point that's over at the top here uh, of my picture on the, put those two uh, points on the surface and connect a line uh, between them, uh, then I will cut through the surface in the middle there. And so overall, this, over this entire domain um, that's drawn in the picture here, this function's non-convex because not every straight line segment is going to sit above the surface there. Uh, so that's it, and that's the picture that you want to keep in mind. Um, things that look sort of parabolic are always pointing upwards, uh, friendly and convex. Um, things that are, um, have got bumps in them uh, or, or, or curvy bits in them are often going to be non-convex because you can go outside the surface. Here's a really important uh, one. Um, this shouldn't be surprising if you think about what a quadratic function looks like uh, in 1D, you know, for, uh, in just a scalar uh, quadratic function. Um, that's obviously uh, convex and the same happens uh, in multiple dimensions as well, that's going to be really important for us. So when we write down a cost function uh, in optimization, uh, if it's quadratic, um, then it's, uh, it's going to be convex straight away. And that's going to be really, really helpful um, for us. So we'll, we'll use this uh, fact a lot. That's why it's in the helpful blue box. There. Um, here's another important fact that I'm going to talk a lot about in the next video. Um, another fact about convex functions is that just as every uh, straight line segment uh, always connecting two points on the, on the curve or the surface always loves a, lies above uh, the function, a convex function always lies above uh, its tangent. So if I create a tangent line uh, to a convex function at any point, then that tangent line always sits um, completely below uh, the function, um, or in multiple dimensions, if I fit a, um, a tangent function uh, at a point, uh, a tangent plane uh, at a point uh, to a convex function, that plane always lies below the surface. Um, yeah, and you, you know, no matter how you construct this thing, um, the, the convex function always lies uh, above its tangent. That's a really important point. Um, and, I'm, uh, and the next thing that I'm going to do is talk about this uh, in more detail and we'll actually prove that result, um, that convex functions always lie above their tangents.